So this is a histogram of the, this comes from executing the matplotlib command hist uh, for the array sloping. And you can see it's, uh, it's, as I said, it starts off at the top at 110 with uh, one size, and it goes down to the bottom at roughly half the size. And I chose the number 42,000 um, so that I got roughly the right number of events here because I want to get something that looks like the real Higgs discovery. Because I take these 42,000, uh, this normalization of 42,000 will give me roughly the right number of events as background. Just to point out that uh, you do have to run these experiments for a long time, which is non-trivial because it costs whatever it is, half a billion dollars a year to run these experiments. Here's what happens if you uh, take that same sloping distribution. Instead of running with 42,000, you just run with 420 events, namely 1% of the data sample. So if that data, say, took a year to run, this is what would take three days to run. And you can see it's pretty messy. Namely, and we'll learn that when there should be 30 events, which is roughly the right number here, the we would expect fluctuations of order the square root of 30, which is um, something like in a level five. And so these things are oscillating back and forth uh, pretty significantly. Um, the error here is around five, and here it's around 16 events, where the error is four. So you have very serious errors. And so you would not see anything um, for uh, to discover a Higgs after the first three days of running. So that points out that uh, this is a uh, hard work. You uh, take your data and then you have to be pretty certain that you're, um, um, you, you don't jump to conclusions because you will not get enough data from a, from a small run to reach any significant conclusions. You have to accumulate data over a long period of time. Uh, now we get back to not the 1% uh, sample, but the full sample. So if we had no background, we would get these uh, beautiful plot histograms here. So this is the uh, typical histogram of the array I call Gauss. And you can see there's a very striking peak. Total number of events here is 300. In any one we have here, the, the, um, um, the uh, data notice that's 100 events, the square root of 100 is 10. So that's quite a few fluctuations. I point out later that when you run Python, you will not get the same answer as I show here, because Python uh, uses a random initial uh, value. Then it uses the time of day to generate the so-called initial random number. And as you will run at a different time of day to me, you will never get this answer here. If you want to get the same answer in a, in a reproducible fashion, you have to explicitly set the, the so-called seed for the random number generator. We'll, we'll mention a little, this a little later on. But anyway, this is a beautiful peak. However, here's what the, something a little more the real experiment. Namely, we have here some of this um, emulation of what that Higgs experiment would see. We have uh, here, we have the Higgs um, enhancement shown uh, added on to the sloping background. Here is what it actually looks like down here. And um, it's a rather modest enhancement, which has to be discovered with a detailed analysis. So, uh, <coughs> This is the same plot as before, uh, but I put on the errors. These are these estimate of errors, the square root of the number of events. And um, so you can see that this is not um, a huge enhancement. Probably 2GV is actually a little pessimistic, and the actual width is a little smaller than that. But this is meant to give you an idea as to what's going on. Uh, even if we had, here's um, sort of not quite as bad as before, not 420 events, is actually um, a 10% experiment. This corresponds to running for a month, if the, given the whole thing ran for a year. 
And you can see here the errors, and you can see that this is not good enough. The enhancement due to Higgs is comparable to the errors. So this is sloping with 4,200 4, events, not 42,000 events. And Higgs is just a total of 30 events, not 300. Here is um, back to the full data sample, and this one here is a much more striking enhancement. This corresponds to taking that narrower Higgs with a width of a half a GV and superimposing on the same background as before. Here's the Higgs. Is it added to the sloping background? And here is the sloping background. Now this is not a little dramatic, but we, 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 if, we, if our arrow was half a GV, we didn't actually do quite the right histogram. It would be better to do this histogram with somewhat smaller bin size. And so here's the same, de same data, but plotted in one GV bin. So twice as many bins, and you can um, see the Higgs is very clear now because the, that uh, we have the Higgs, uh, we have more particles per bin relatively in the Higgs compared to the background because we've halved the background by halving the bin size, but the Higgs are still dominantly just in two bins. And here is um, perhaps an even more striking result. This is, although not drastically so, but it's a uh, this is the same uh, narrow Higgs, but we've used half a GV bin size, not um, one GV, or in two is what the original plots were. This points out that when you're doing this type of analysis, you need to look, um, think carefully about the bin size. If you make the bin size too small, you'll get too much, too big an error, because you would have fluctuations. If you make the big bin size too too big, you may wash out a signal which is um, um, present if you go to a smaller bin size. So this is the type of thing an experienced uh, physicist would do in analyzing this data. They would try to understand their measurement error, what the right bin size is, and make these trade-offs. And they would tend to do that intuitively, because they've been doing this type of work for a long time. 